and good evening and you're very welcome back to the brand new season of not just uh, the League of Ireland Women's Premier Division as it's now called but also the podcast here on FinalWhistle.ie covering all things women's soccer in Ireland and of course joining me Brefney Early again for another season is Aaron Clark. Aaron you're very welcome back, how have you been? Yeah I've been busy, been, been a hectic off season, things starting to ramp up now especially with the, the new season being so close, uh, looking forward to Really getting back into the trenches again, you know, since since the, the cup final, it's probably had a bit of a lull. And just looking forward to getting back into it now, getting back to getting to games, getting to see see what the season entails. It's going to be an, an excitement. Absolutely. Fourth uh, of March, of course, is the big kickoff. It's a great day. It's the best day of the year, in my opinion. Uh, but that is my birthday as well. So I'll be enjoying <laughs> a, a little bit of a celebratory mood on that particular day as the season kicks off. Just over 10 days to go to that particular event. Uh, and we're going to be talking, of course, uh, to Roshi Malloy of Athlone Town. In just a couple of moments, she and her teammates, they face off in a repeat of last year's cup final against Shelburne uh, in the, uh, I suppose, in Athlone Town Stadium on Saturday afternoon in the inaugural President's Cup. It's been on the men's fixture for a couple of seasons now. Um, we've had some kind of uh, cups versus league winners over the last few years. It's the first time we've seen it in the women's game. Step forward, do you think, Aaron? I like it. I think it's it's progress considering what we we'll talk about when we talk about Leonard, we talk about how the league has changed, how everything's changed. It's another step in the right direction. I think Michael D. Higgins is a, a massive fan of not just League not just League of Ireland, the men's game, the women's game. You see him at internationals, he was at the cup final in Tallah Stadium and it's great to see that they've they've brought this tradition on to the to the women's game and it's it's one that, you know, whoever wins the first wins of the weekend will go down in history as the first ever winner of the the president's cup and you know it's it's a nice little a nice little honor to win especially gives a bit of a spice to start the season because it's it may be a little bit more than a pre-season friendly absolutely and of course plenty of stuff to talk about over the next 50 minutes or so uh with a list as long as our arm to chat to the professionalization of the league the new league branding and the merger with the men's and the women's competitions which i think is positive we'll talk more about that later on we might even touch into it in our conversation with roshin and uh, we'll maybe preview a little bit of the world cup of course ireland played china this afternoon nil nil the final score in that particular game uh, you might get your views on that. I know you're watching it as well, Aaron, uh, later on the show. We'll talk about some of the new arrivals to the league. But first of all, let's get back and chat to someone who's been on the show before. We're delighted to have her back on the programme. And that is, of course, uh, at Lone Town's Roisin Malloy. And she joins us now ahead of the, that inaugural President's Cup. We did have some technical problems earlier. So apologies if there's a little bit of sound quality. But Roisin, how are you? Hello. Good, thanks. Thanks for having me on. You're more than welcome. I suppose let's start with the game on Saturday. Um, what's your thoughts coming into what promises to be a, a unique experience for, for players at this level in the country? Yeah, it's, it's um, obviously a, a new competition or um, match where we get to play in and to repeat at the cup final. So um, while it might be two sort of new luck teams um, playing this round, we're, we're really excited to be able to take part in the first female president's cup and for it to be in at, at lone town is um yeah it's a really proud moment proud moment for us all in that loan and yeah we can't wait we're really excited it's one of them that we may see president michael d higgins himself even making the trip what was the thoughts of that sort of you know how do you feel about the likes of that when you see the president a cup named after him he may even be at the game yeah it's, he's obviously been like a, a really um, good supporter of women's football and we got to meet him in the cup final which was um, a really special moment as well and obviously showing support for women's football um, so yeah it'll be really nice um, if he's down that loan on Saturday as well to see him again and um, yeah it'll be a really nice occasion for us all to, to kick off the season. We'll come back to the game itself on Saturday in a moment but maybe let's take a quick look back at the last 12 months. In your wildest dreams this time 12 months ago did you really believe you finish second in the league, get to the cup final, uh, or was it all just kind of that whole fairy tale experience over the last twelve months with Athlone? Um, yeah, it definitely was a sort of fairy tale experience. Like I suppose starting off with the season, we set our goals, and we did definitely have belief that in the squad that there was that potential. Um, did we think it would come so soon? Maybe not, but as soon as we got kind of got on a roll, our results kind of just took off from there. The confidence and kept growing um, and yeah I suppose we just kept the momentum going and, and the whole way to the cup final which was um, an amazing experience for us all. While it didn't go our, our way on the 
on the day we we still really enjoyed the the day and the whole year was yeah it was a fairy tale was the was the p-mount game sort of the turning point because you hadn't beaten Shelbourne, you hadn't beaten Wexford, you hadn't beaten P-Mount, you hadn't even taken points off them, and then all of a sudden you beat P-Mount, you start to go on a massive run, and then people start to take a lot of notes. Yeah, I do think that was that was a sort of turning point as well, because we had said out we'd never beaten P-Mount, Shelbourne or Wexford um, before in the league, so to beat them up in, in um, Green Oak was... Uh, it was a big achievement for us on the day. It was a really tough game, and yeah, I suppose after that, you kind of do look around you and think, "Geez, we could we could really challenge all the top teams in the league now." Um, and yeah, lucky enough, we did go on to beat Shelburne and Wexford later on in the league. Um, so yeah, they were all really big moments throughout the league for us. What was the the biggest moment? What, what do you remember from the the cup final, like that whole day and everything that kind of comes with it? Because it is different every other game. Yeah, it is. Um, I think we probably were a small bit, like not overwhelmed in a way at the, at the start, but yeah, the crowd was bigger than anything we'd ever played in front of before. Um, and it did take us a while to settle into the game, but yeah, it was it was a really special occasion. And to get to go out with the girls we played with the whole year and who are really good friends, yours, it was such a, a special occasion. But yeah, we did want to win the game and unfortunately it didn't go our way, but um, we still look back on it like um, we're very proud of what we, we achieved last year. In terms of growth of Athlone, the season you had last year plus the cup final, how much do you take out of that when you move into 2023? Uh, a lot. Like Obviously, it's a new season um, and it's a new, a new team as well. Like, we lost players and we've we've gained a lot of players as well. Um, but definitely take confidence from from what we did last year and want to push that even further this year. You know, um, we want to improve on what we did last year. We finished second in both competitions, so now we want to go and win them. Um, but we know how difficult it is in this league and how difficult every game is. So yeah, I think every team will believe that they can go on and win the league because it's so competitive. But um, We'll definitely take a lot of confidence from what we did last year and, and hope that we can go on one step further this year. In terms, I suppose, of those departures that you talked about, uh, there's been some fairly high-profile ones. I know Emily Corbett was, of course, uh, impressive throughout last season. Won't be with you this year. She moves to Wexford. Uh, you've two girls moved to, um, to Tala in the shape of Miss O'Kane and Jessica Hennessy at the back. And, and now Leah Brady, although she was out injured for a period, um, is going to be in Galway next year. Um how disappointing is it to lose players like that? Can you fill those holes? Um, yeah, we were we were sad to see the girls go because they were all a big part of what we achieved last year, um, and we were all really close and good friends. But like that's football; you have to move on very quickly. And we wish all of them the best because you know we're we're still good friends with them and everything. And yeah, but I I do think we've we've filled the holes, and I think we've gained. Um, on our team and we've definitely added really quality players um so yeah i still think that we we have a squad that that's capable of of competing at the top of this league and i think one player who a lot of people would have been chasing without singling out just players but shauna brennan i think a lot of play, people would have been chasing her considering what she's done with galway it's good to see now that like while you're losing players that quality players the likes of that the likes of chloe singleton you even seen players who come in last year staying on as well that must be a huge thing for athlone as well yeah like shauna and, and chloe would would be you know really top players in this league like i'd say shauna is probably the toughest left back that i've come up against in the league and um, in previous seasons so to get players of that caliber is is only is really positive for us as a team and i think they've fitted in seamlessly as well like They've really, um, there hasn't been much of a transition for them. So I think um, they're going to be really big players for us this season. And yeah, I'm really excited to see them um, on our team. Of course, Gaelic has always been a big uh, so ele elephant in the room when it comes to like, loan players. I know you yourself have dabbled uh, with Sligo in the past. Like Ryan's been with Clare. Uh, there are others. Myrna Devaney, I know, has probably opted out of Leitrim this year. Kate Stevens in with Galway. How much does that affect your preparation coming into a season? 
when you're really going to to be in the top two or even challenge for the title again, like you did last year. How much does the Gaelic affect that? Yeah. Sorry, you might not heard my uh, my question there. Um, just in terms of having girls involved in Gaelic team squads, how does that affect your preparation for the season? Um, I don't think it has a massive impact. Like Tommy and, and all the management team have, have always been very supportive of the Gaelic. Um, in terms of um, you know, managing players um, and stuff like that. And as long as people are committed to what they're doing, and um, I think. I don't think it has infected it because you know we're still all training really hard together and um yeah there's not much of a clash really either so um it hasn't had much of an impact on, on us could it have had a positive impact instead because the fact that tommy's allowing that environment where people can go one way go the other way whereas others would have said pick pick one or pick the other whereas players are now because they're happy that they're able to do both sports uh yeah i think so um like we're still, um, I think he has been very supportive in the Gaelic and you know not making you choose between one or the other. But like we still, we're still always at training and training hard towards it, what we want to achieve. But um, on your days where you're not in that loan, you know he's not going to say that you can't play Gaelic and stuff like that. So I think that has had a pos had a positive impact on our team, like the likes of Laurie and Murray and Shauna and Kate Slevin. You know these are all really talented Gaelic players as well as soccer players so we want them on our team as well you know um so I think that has been a positive. I spotted you we, we passed like ships in the night in a very crowded showgrounds at the weekend and uh, Sligo Rovers of course sealing that win it was a great game against Shamrock Rovers at the weekend I suppose previously you've gone up on to Sligo Rovers games but for the first time you're in the ground as a registered player in the exact same league as the game you're attending for the first time. Has that significance kind of, I suppose, come into your head yet in terms of where this merger of the two leagues puts the women's game in the country? Um, sorry, can you just repeat that? Yeah, like, so you were at the game and you've been to the Sligo Rovers games I suppose, since you were probably a child, but now you're there as a player yeah. in the same league. Does, has that sunk in yet? Um, yeah, like, I suppose I would have gone off going to the showgrounds, um, and watching the games. Um, and I never really probably saw myself playing in that league, um, because you didn't really see much of the women's games or it wasn't that high profile, whereas now you kind of feel like you are on the same platform as the men in a way, because, you know, we're obviously on the same platform on the LOI TV and the, the media days there you know all the players are there together the boys and the girls and stuff like that so um yeah i think it's definitely becoming it's growing towards um that sort of equality and, and that's really positive for the women's game just segued lovely into what i wanted to bring up the the men have 19 games live on tv this year there's 12 women's games now which shows the gap is closing but of them 12 games the first four announced Atlanta are involved in two of them. That must be nice. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. Um, having TG carry down that loan last year was, it was really nice having, you know, like family, like living all around the country could watch you. Um, and it's it's not on like a laptop or phones or it's, you're actually on TV and it's live as well. It's, um, it was really nice. So yeah, to be involved in the first four games is um, massive for us and it kind of shows how far we've come as a team, like that, you know, we're recognised um, by DG Cars, people want to watch us and stuff like that. So, yeah, we're really happy to be involved in, in the live games. Well, I'm sure it will be a good set of fixtures to open the, the league campaign. Roshi, thank you so much for joining us. Apologies for listeners for the few little technical glitches we had there on, on the connection. But, Roshi, as ever, a pleasure to chat to you and wish you the very, very best luck at the weekend in the inaugural President's Cup in Athlone Town Stadium. Of course, live on uh, whatever platform you want to get it on as well. Roshi, thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. Bye. Roshi Malloy there. Um, Phenomenal player, but also just a really nice person as well, Aaron, in terms of uh, had the pleasure of working with her at Sligo a couple of years ago. And uh, she's really grown into that team and into the league. And she's one of Athlone Town's probably unsung heroes. We get a lot of mentions of, of some of her teammates in the media, but 
And Roshi for me is the one that kind of keeps that engine ticking in the middle uh, for Athlone. I think the problem the problem is is last year when Athlone, Emily, Jess, Mirren, so you're right, they stole the headlines. But when you actually dissect things a little bit more and then you look at what's going on in and around the background, the likes of Roshi Malloy's name is never really far from people's lips. Same with the likes of Laurie Ryan. They're, they're not really very, very far away because they're always mentioned for the work they'll do, that, that the hard work they'll do. That's not always seen. And I think that's sort of a testament to, to the likes of them. And I think Tommy Ewa has probably got them drilled that well that they know you know what they need to do yes they probably don't care about the headlines if if someone else gets it. as long as that long got the three points last year that was all that they really cared about and it's the same thing i was having a conversation with somebody during the day about individual awards and you know i think players sort of take if you give me a, if you gave an option of a of an individual award at the end of a season or a league middle a medal or a cup medal they'd, they'd bite your hand off for the league and cup medal and i think this year we'll see an awful lot more of these at long players because maybe the star names aren't necessarily there and this is the opportunity that maybe the likes of Roshi Malloy could be the next one to hit the headlines for for our great performances with Atlon. Yeah, there's a couple of Americans in there probably deserve a mention as well. Manny Gibson come through in a fair few goals through last season. But let's look at what the overall President's Cup. First of all, the fact that it's on the, the radar at all, that it's even on the fixture list, um, it's a huge pickup to the game here that now it's everything is really kind of being merged. If the guys have it, the girls get it, and that's the way it should be. But um, are you looking forward to the game? Are you traveling down to it? I'm unfortunately not traveling down. I would have liked to travel down this weekend. Just it's not really a good weekend for myself of other commitments. But like I'm going to talk about. Um, you said there the men get it, the women get it. I was obviously at the media launch for the for the for the league, and like you were you were looking around, look at the social media content that's coming out. The men done it, the women done it, the first division done it, the Premier Division done it. They all done it. They were all brought over to do it. Like even in terms of the small little details, like the footballs. The footballs when they were getting the photos taken with sports well had the women's league on them. The, the the boxes that they were standing beside at times had the women's league on. They had the different ones for each each division. And it's a sort of small little things that to me stood out from you know what's being done. And I think adding the president's cup, it's it's a it's a lovely touch. It's a it's a great little touch. And if Michael D. Higgins is got is there for the first one, it, it it would make it even more and I just, I'd love to know as much as being a little bit of a cynic, um, how the venue choice was made. But you know, I think it's quite good that it is an Athlone. It, it gives an opportunity for Athlone to probably sell sell it and push it. They've been pushing it all through social media in the last week or so, trying to get as many people as possible in the gate. And let's hope it's a success. And live on LOA TV, like the men's President's Cup final, which is you know, it's great. I think to be fair, the FAI, rightly or wrongly, have come with a policy over the last. I definitely have experienced it myself uh, 15 years ago, uh, 13 years ago, of, of bringing um, those games where it's a city team versus a, a rural team or even Dublin versus Cork. They do take them out of Dublin where they possibly can. So I think, I'm not going to say it's a definite policy, but an awful lot of those games tend to be played in the, the smaller venue, so to speak. Uh, so be interesting to see if that's what's happened here, but it doesn't really matter. I think it's great. I think you're more likely to get a crowd in that loan as well, potentially, which is probably part of that factor as well. We've so much more to get on with, though. Uh, so much has happened over the league. I really want to talk about transfers, but first, the absolute biggest news of the whole last three months since we, we finished up last season is the professionalisation of the league. Now, of course, this is in, in name and structure, uh, but we have seen some early evidence that there are players now been offered proper contracts, legitimate contracts, and uh, any under the table stuff has kind of got, been gone away with. And there's really an opportunity here for girls to create that opportunity to stay here, be a semi-pro or a full-time pro in this country, in this league. That's huge news, though. Surely, Aaron. Yeah. Um, were we fully ready for it? That's the question that we, we, we can't say yes or no. We probably weren't. But the problem is, is yes, they could have went with it next year and said, clubs, here's 12 months to do it. But you're coming into a World Cup cycle where so much has happened. Yes, the likes of Rovers come in. Rovers obviously wanted this. Other clubs wanted it as well. And we can see that other clubs are using it now and using it to their advantage. To be honest with you, it, it had to happen. You know, like you can't expect to continue to lose the players that we could be losing season on season. Like the worst thing for me is when, like, and no disrespect to the Scottish League, but when players go to the likes of Glasgow because they can earn a, earn a few quid playing for Glasgow, where you look what P-Mount done against them in the Champions League. They were missing Stephanie Roach that day. They could have easily beaten them. You know, so there's not a massive gap there. And we've seen what the women's team done against them in the playoffs. So for me, it's the right step. 
probably could have been brought probably could have been introduced earlier than it was introduced in terms of you know get the clubs a little bit more ready and have a you know saying the summer listen this is coming in next year when it came in the timing was was probably left a little bit of a question but it's a positive and i think the fact that we've seen this we've seen we will touch on it more the actual league branding everything changing loa tv they're now starting to charge for the women's games as well if people don't buy season tickets and stuff like that so everything is going in the right direction and i think it's up to the clubs now to to try and drive this on like we're seeing clubs getting their record sponsorship deals and stuff like that now the money is the money is there to to bring this league on yes it's going to take a lot of work from the fai and support from the fai and all partners media and things like that but it's a definitely a massive step in the right direction and it's something that i'm excited to see where it goes and what actually happens from it yeah there hasn't been a lot of transparency from our point of view at least uh, from the outside looking in as to who which players are on professional contracts who's on semi-professional contracts who's on amateur contracts that's kind of personal so we're probably not going to see a whole pile of information on that but we can read between the lines and look at certain players and certain movements and and i suppose assume that money was a factor in some of those decisions um do you think there's a potential for a monopoly for someone who comes in with a proper budget to run a professional or semi-professional team at this level like like shamrock rovers appear to have done to just hoover up all the talent and this potentially become a one-horse race i don't think it will personally but Potentially, it could. So the pop the problem here is like you're talking about there what you said. We don't know about contracts and structures for certain people. We don't know like we don't know what they're getting. So we it's hard to judge and say what's being offered to what to why players are going as well. And I think the monopoly side of things, there was a concern that that would happen. There's no doubt about it. The players that Shamrock Rovers went after. And listen, if you've got the budget there to go after them. You're rightly so. You're going to go out and you're going to try and make a statement and make an impression on the league because that's what the, what you need to do. But in terms of the clubs that maybe less money are, are the ones who are probably more in danger. But like we've seen what happened with Shelburne. Shelburne got ripped apart and then Shelburne exploited the networks that they had from abroad and have been able to bring players in from abroad and being able to to do things and stuff like that to actually help them fill gaps. But the problem you, you the problem would have to say here is with the professionalism is there is a little bit of a danger that some of the, the better underage players may get swept aside because if, if if one club has a monopoly of the top players, others may look for the moves abroad, like what like we've seen now. Like even look at the likes of Treaty United. They've got multiple players from Canada, a couple in America. Players are coming in from where you wouldn't have expected that from Treaty. Now the problem here is Treaty might have just done a, a link up with the college and, and got them in on college stuff from from next year. We don't actually know that. So we don't even know if they're if, you know if they're on contracts or they're just coming in through scholarships or coming through something like that. Because that would definitely give us an indication. But I think Rovers, from what they've done, like they snapped up six, seven, eight of the best of the best top, top players in the country and. The problem with our Rovers is, is that the onus is on Rovers to deliver after what they've spent. No if, buts, or maybe they've come out and said some statements in you know in the media and stuff like that. The likes of Jason Carey and Collie O'Neill. That unfortunately now they have to go and back it up. If they don't go and back it up, there'll be there'll be questions asked about. They'll be called out. Like it's only a twenty game league season this year. It, it was twenty seven last year. So there's seven games less because of the extra team coming in and the, and the, the eight week gap for the World Cup. So there's no real room for error rovers play shells in the third week then 10 days later they play wexford again so you can't really afford to drop points and i think that's going to be it's going to be interesting to see what what the, what way they do like other clubs have strengthened as well use the use the opportunity to, to give players expenses or pay them to get players in the door and i think it's an overall positive but in terms of marketing and not marketing in terms of a marker to where how far a club can go the FAI did mention a financial fair play. I would like to know a little bit more about it as to what they're sort of, how they're going to judge that. Are Rovers now going to have to get a thousand people to pop in at a game just to just to cover that? Or are Shelburne going to have to have a certain attendance number because the players they brought in? We don't really know the finer details. We only know the professional side of things. Whereas I'd like to know the, the nitty gritty side of things so we can actually have a, a proper understanding as to what's going on. In terms of the actual movements, let's maybe just quickly go through uh, the players in more so than the players out, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. The other ones are quite a long list. Uh, we'll start with that loan and Shells because they're in the competition this weekend in the President's Cup final. Um, they've got three signings according to our latest information. There might be more that haven't been officially announced yet. But uh, Eve Keneally, Chloe Singleton and Shauna Brennan, we touched on the two latter ones with, um, with Roisin. Do they... Is, is the quality in the same as the quality out? 
it's hard to it's hard it's hard to say. I definitely think Sean O'Brien is is capable of causing a massive stir in Athlone in terms of her ability. Chloe Singleton has sort of threatened a little bit, but not now. Maybe maybe always put the the end product on it. But the thing is, for me, it's the keeping of Maddie Gibson is probably the big one because. She can be midway through the season. I'd be like, I'd be, I want to see what she's going to be like after a full preseason. How many goals she'll score from this year? Because I think she'll definitely be the the focal point up top, and she'd be the one who they'll be who they'll be chasing and who they'll be looking to for the goals. I think the prop in terms of quality replacing Jess Hennessy is never easy, but I I would say that there are thereabouts. Man, it, it's tough to it's tough to sort of judge where exactly they are at the moment, but like they're they're close boy, but. It all depends on if they can keep everybody fit. To, can they push on again? Speaking of keeping people fit, I think Dana Sharif is as good as a, a new sign. And she had made a very 100%. impressive start last year. Played six or seven games, got injured, missed the rest of the season. Uh, she's in as a as a full timer. I think she's uh, due to be a, a fit for the game at the weekend, and hopefully we'll see a full season from her. She impressed in the stages too. So some decent names in there. If we skip down to Shelburne, um, a lot of players through the exit door. In terms of the players, they've managed to keep most of the squad. Although there are rumours circulating around Jesse Stapleton maybe heading towards. Uh, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even say that's a that's a rumour. That's been. That's been every. It's been concrete confirmed. She can't sign until she's eighteen. That's the only. That was the only problem. So, Jesse pop. Jesse will sign that, that pre-contract agreement. It could happen any day. They might even do what they done with um, Jess Sue last year, where they may wait till Paddy's Day and just announce it. But. Jess, they, the, the shells are shells are all, are planning for Jess only to there till the summer. Yeah, Nadine Clare, Sophie Waters, and Kerry Letman all make the change from Belfield uh, from DLR Waves to Shells. And uh, we've seen a raft of um, I think two American signings this week. We expect maybe another three or four names. They've actually they've actually um, um they've actually announced them all today. Okay. So Siobhan Clean has come back in from playing with the playing with the dubs. Massive addition, Ireland international winger. They've they've lacked a bit of creativity in the wing in the wings. They brought in. They've used their connections with with Heather O'Reilly, two players who have come through or, or played with the NC the college in North Carolina. Have also come in. They've uh, a couple of Canadians in as well. But by all accounts, from speaking to people, they're extremely fit players. Their their ability are quite good and. This could be what catapults them back up to where where they were. Like they, they probably weren't expecting to lose everyone they did lose. I think the Abbey one, they were they were they weren't expecting Jess Gargan, they probably weren't expecting. I think Amanda Budden, they might have expected that to happen. But it's for them, it's a case that they they've they've had to go looking up further apart because clubs have managed to tie down the best of the players in the National League pretty quickly. Yeah, we're not going to get too deep into all the other squads. We'll go through the next week uh, ahead of the actual first round of league games. We just don't have the time today because there are other bits and pieces I'd like to discuss with you in terms of the women's game in the in the country. And I suppose for me, we've touched on it a couple of times already with Roisin and between ourselves, is the, the merger between the Women's National League and the League of Ireland. I suppose fundamentally there wasn't a whole pile of difference between them in terms of the practicalities, but now it's it's very visible, it's very definite, this is the one league, both men and women play in it. Um, and the fact that it's branded as the men's Premier Division and the women's Premier Division, I think that's important. The biggest thing for me and the biggest change for me that I put my hand up and say yes, is they no longer have that website. They're now in the League of Ireland, .ie, and they're all in there. That's the biggest thing for me. I've been calling for it for years. The website wasn't fit for purpose. And to see they actually have it in there, and you can switch between the three. I just think it's brilliant. Smart little things like that. The logos are simple. They have three different colours for the three different divisions. I think that's brilliant because it, it's it's no there's no point in going all mad, complicated, and things like that. It's all simple. It's all brilliant. And when it comes to doing events and stuff like that, it's easy for them to do. They've rebranded the underage stuff as well. They've also added uh, in, in addition to EA Sports have come on for another couple of years as the underage women's sponsors as well as the underage men's. You know, it's it's all positive about the branding, and I think it's a right step in the right direction. I do have a question on branding and stuff like that though for you, Breffney. Okay. LOI TV is no longer going to be free for women's games. What's your opinion? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I think in, uh, I've long been an advocate of charging something for the games because I think it sets a value. What's free isn't appreciated. And if you're saying that a uh, Premier Division game men's is seven euro and a first division men's game is five euro, but the women, uh, that's free, I would prefer to see them charge a fee and I would prefer to see them invest in the actual product because I think. And I say this with the height of respect to all the volunteers who've been involved over the last few years. 
Um, the, the production values somewhere like Athlone, when they have a commentator, which is most of the time, but not always, has been better than the robotic cameras. So I would love to see them actually take, even if it's only 30 or 40 people who are um, paying for each game, it's a start, it's somewhere, it's a budget to reinvest back in. And I would gladly have paid a fiver to sit and watch a, a game, um, a women's game over the years. I think it now puts a value on it. I think clubs charge and season tickets, the exact same thing. It's like Rovers last year. It was free if you wanted to go to women's games, if you had a season ticket. Now it's an extra 50 euro. It's not about the physical money. It's about what it says that we value as a club or as a league, the women's game. And I think that's super important. Interesting on that though. Um, if you look at Shamrock Rovers, I just, just I'm just using them as an example because I've seen it the other day. I, I I haven't checked the other clubs, but they tweeted about their season tickets the other day, and they were saying it's fifty percent off by getting the season. So that would indicate to me that they're potentially going to charge a tenner a game into a game for a women's game. And I I know from from speaking to other for other people in terms of the last couple of years, maybe we haven't properly priced the league either at times where it's. It's not necessarily, when, especially when you've got like big games and stuff like that. We're pricing it, we're devaluing ourselves as well. I think that goes to your point as well with the with the LOA TV. It's it, it's about being, you have to be careful in terms of that. If you want to grow something, you have to have it correctly uh, priced accordingly. And yes, there's going to be naysayers who will say clubs are charging too much. LOA TV should be free. It, they can be free and the clubs can charge little, little to nothing that people want, but the league will never progress. The league will stay where what where it is and it'll go backwards. Whereas I think clubs need, clubs are now starting to realise that with this professional time coming, they're going to have to do more. To, they're going to have to raise more funds and more, raise more income off things. And I think it can only have a benefit for what happens on the pitch once once the money's correctly invested into things. 100% agree, because you look at the investment that's obviously coming from Shamrock Rovers into the women's game, it's all well and good, year one, make a big splash, spend a lot of money. What happens in year two when you've lost potentially a six-figure sum? We heard those kind of figures been touted in, in Galway in an amateur league last year. So let's say, hypothetically, that's the minimum bar that Shamrock Rovers might invest this year, 150 to 200,000 euro. It could be more, let's be honest. Um, can they find that year two? Can they find a year three, year four? Especially if they don't go on and win the league and dominate like they probably expect to. What happens if they're finishing second or third, not getting the Champions League, not getting the status that comes with that? Are they as eager to put another maybe 150, 200, quarter of a million into the women's game when it's not bringing people through the turnstile? No, I don't think so. No, they're not. And Paul, you've just hit something there that's probably you hit the nail on the head for something for me there. If you look at Scotland a couple of years ago, they only had one team in the Champions League. We need an Irish team to progress to do well in the Champions League, and we need the Republic of Ireland women's team to continue to progress the way they're going. Because if both happen, we could eventually have it to a stage where we could have two teams in the Champions League. Scotland now have two, and England have three. Some other European teams have three as well, and it's all based on coefficient and stuff like that. So. If we can progress on the field and continue the show and, and make the splash in Europe that teams have potentially tried to do and with the with the league growth, it can have a knock-on effect for the actual league as well, even in terms of European stuff. Because like you look at you look at Glasgow, for example, Glasgow in the last couple of years have been the top seed in the group stages of the whole of the, the competition. Then the second team in Scotland, where I think they were second or a third seed. So there's no reason why if 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 things are done right and push on that we can't have them sort of things but you you're, you're right there in terms of in terms of the likes of rovers and stuff like that is that it's it's hard for clubs to continue to just throw money in if they're not seeing an investment coming back on it so that's why i'm i'm intrigued to see what way the clubs are going to how they're going to market their games this year how they're going to push their games this year because no disrespect but some clubs they might have tweeted once about it and then left it be and sort of on the day of the game an hour or two before the game they'll, they'll tweet the team and you might get the odd update here and there but i think the clubs are the clubs know that they've they've had to put in a bigger investment, so they they're gonna have to do they're gonna have to do more for. It. And I think even though even the way the FAI have jumped on board nearly every transfer that's come out, they've pushed it and promoted the club. They promoted whatever's happened. So I think it's it's exciting to see what's gonna ha what's gonna happen. But crowds are gonna play a massive part this year because I think the clubs are gonna need to get crowds in the gates this year. And I think something that probably won't happen as much is yes they'll probably still allow kids in kids in either free or, or a really reduced rate but we may not see the amount of complimentary tickets going to adults and stuff like that this year because that all, that all, all them expenses will add up 
I think so. And I think I think I think it's exciting for the league to really after 10 or 11, 12 years, whatever it is now, of of being in existence and kind of finding their feet. I think last year we saw massive engagement on our content covering the league. Uh, you talk about the website, of course, we've been here for two or three years providing that as well. Don't forget final whistle.ie, all the results, fixtures, stats, and everything across both uh, the men's and the women's divisions in the League of Ireland. We continue to do that, but it is exciting to see the new FAI Connect app, which I think is a huge positive. Uh, from the FBI, as long as that is maintained by both the clubs and the association, I have one down. I have one downside to it. Go on. I don't like seeing, uh, and I'm going to name check the play, uh, the two players, the two DLR Waves goalkeepers. Both one is an under Ireland, the Ireland under 19 international, and the other is a senior international. And neither of them have Ireland flags beside their name. They have the the country they were born beside their name, and I think to me that small little detail that just needs to be ironed out because it's all a positive. Everything's a positive, but it's just small little things that we pick up on. I think that's a little bit nitpicky, but I, I, I do agree with you. For me, compared to what we used to from the FAI of old, and I, I make no bones about it, I'm one of the biggest critics from time to time. I'm really impressed with the branding. I'm really impressed with the direction the league has, has gone since Mark Scanlon got the job. I'm not just putting it all down to him. He's got a really good team around him, but I think they're beginning to bring a little bit of intelligence to um, how it's portrayed and maybe looking at what the consumer wants so the fan the the club the player and providing that and it really is an exciting time for the league we see the the, the attendances i don't know whether it's a post covid thing where it's like people are just more inclined to get out and get active and get involved in things but i was in the showgrounds on saturday night as i mentioned to roisin and she was there herself um virtually a capacity crowd you know if you took everyone who was standing on the the the, the town end uh, and put them in the far seats on the left-hand side uh, as you're looking at the pitch from the main stand, they probably would have filled every seat. So virtually a sellout, if not a complete sellout. You know, I, I was in I was in Talca Friday night for the Shells men's game, and I stood the exact same spot as stand for the women's game. And normally it's it's empty. I'm with one or two of the parents off, off the club, and it was just rammed from side to side. And I think we're going to see a little bit more of that this year from, from, from the women's. I think the attendances from the women will definitely go up an awful lot. The Shells Ultras will be happy to get the Duncanja end back. Uh, obviously, it's been used by away, away fans. Uh, the Ballybock end's been used by away fans in the men's. But I suspect we'll get big crowds there. And it'll it'll be interesting, though, as well, to see how Shamrock Rovers versus Bowes games are handled. Because, obviously, the rivalry that's there in the men's, how do they do? They have to segregate them. Do Is that is this the first we see of that? There's a lot of permutations, but I definitely think people are going to want to see them games. People are going to want to see Shelburne versus Shamrock Rovers on, on Paddy's weekend because of the fact that the six Shelburne players who went to who went to Rovers. People are going to want to tune in to see that sort of thing. And it'll be high drama, but I think we'll get, we'll get good crowds as well at these games. I think, and, and uh, you talk about drama, there's so many storylines coming through this, particularly the next six to eight, seven months of, of the season in terms of players maybe with an eye on a World Cup place. Are they going to be fully committed in challenges in the league? Uh, are they going to be trying to avoid injury? Are they going to be full-blooded? Uh, will the Rovers girls face stick when they go back to their clubs, whether it's Athlone, Paymount, Shells, wherever they came from? And nearly every club in the league has lost a player to... To Shamrock Rovers at this stage, I think the only one who hasn't is Wexford of the of the main competitors. So it's going to be interesting to see how that all plays out. So many different narratives coming through. Before we finish up, and we are going to finish up fairly quickly, um, let's talk for a moment about those two new arrivals. Uh, Galway United and Shamrock Rovers. Uh, we saw Galway struggling, women's FC struggling at the end of last year. They've been replaced by Galway United. Um, but with a lot of the same personnel involved, Phil Trill will be the head coach of the men's team, or the women's team he replaces. Uh, I suppose Alan Murphy, who finished up with uh, the women's FC side at the end of last season. A lot of the same faces uh, will be in Maroon, you'd expect, in the same ground uh, come 4th of March. Uh, Shamrock Rovers, though, we've, we've already touched on them. They're kind of coming in at different angles. Galway seemed to almost have taken a step back from her Galway WFC, where Shamrock Rovers seemed to have raised the bar for everybody. Yeah, that's a fair point. It's a it's a fair point. I'm not going to lie. When we we will probably discuss Galway in more detail next week when we're talking about ins and outs and stuff like that. But for me, I I was expecting more. I was expecting them to push and try and rob three or four of the of the Athlone players. The example for me, the likes of Kate Slevin, Shauna Brennan, and, and Chloe Singleton going the other way would be massive losses for them. Yes, they've getting getting Bra uh, Leah Brady back, but she's been injured for quite a while. 
be interesting if Kayla Brady follow uh, Kayla follows suit or if Kayla comes back playing soccer. But like that's the sort of thing from them. Whereas Savannah McCarthy's also gone out the door. I, w- I would have thought they'd have been pushing to try to get on last season, but then was probably a, a disappointing season. But they've just seemed to be nearly stagnating to where they are again. And I hate to say it, but it's 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 gonna be one that you're watching on to see what has actually changed because from the outset it doesn't look like much has changed bar bar the name has changed and if that if it's based off that then will they continue the slippy slope that they were on last season potentially rovers you're right rovers have come in and raised the bar for everybody i was talking to, i was talking to people about when rovers were trying to get players in like they had near enough an american college layout in terms of what i was told in terms of all your kit this is what you'll wear this is all your travel gear this is all this is, and they pretty much had it all laid out with players like why would a player you know you turn around to a player yes the, yes the money is the money is great but you you turn around to a player and show this is how we value this is how we appreciate you players are obviously going to look to try and jump at that as well the only one thing the only downside i would say to rovers is probably the fact that it seems from the announcement that they have only four of last year's underage academy will be in the senior squad this year compared to compared to the, the rest will be brought in from other clubs. That I was hoping you might have seen a, a few more. They've got to a they got to a league final as well. So they're a decent enough side. Maybe in the next year or two we might see some more coming through. I think that'd be the only real downside from Rovers is that there's not as many coming through in the Academy. Yeah, just looking at the list of players who come in uh, from the outside, effectively outside of that Galway football bubble uh, to Galway. Uh, Liam Brady's gone back, of course, a student in NUA, or not NUA Galway anymore, UG. I don't know what they actually call it for, the University of Galway. Um, Siobhan Do- Doolan has also come in from there. She'd be probably less well known uh, to fans of the game. But Jim McGuinness is a big sign in. Um, former uh, universities international, I think she has been capped by the north as well. I could be wrong on that one, definitely uh, in and out of squads, both north and south of the border over the years. Uh, while Amy Madden, who really impressed me, she's only uh, Irish number 16 international, uh, has moved from treaty. That's a big sign in as well. She did well, I think she got injured towards the end of the year, but um, she's impressed me in stages of last year as well. Yeah, two, two very good, two very good players. So you, you have mentioned, I think Amy Madden was, was rightly so getting a bit of recognition. Towards the second half of last season, Gemma McGuinness done well, done well for Sligo Rovers. Sligo will be extremely disappointed to lose her. But from a Galway point of view, when you've got the new club coming in, they've got a, a massive backing within the actual men's side of the game. You were sort of hoping that they'd bring it on. They'd be pushing and trying to nabble all the best players within the within the region. Whereas when when you see two of the best, probably two of the better players from, from Galway leaving, that's where you're sort of like, hold on a minute. You know, it's sort of question mark or raises raises an eyebrow and like at the minute I don't think they've really they haven't taken a step forward on the squad that they had last year I think Brennan is a massive massive loss I think she's somebody who could potentially over the next year or two force her way into an Ireland squad even well, we might talk more about the Ireland squad in the coming weeks ahead of uh, what promises to be a very exciting couple of months in the lead up to the World Cup in just uh, June, July. It's a very, very exciting five, time. Five, five, five months, five months. Two, five months, two days ago was the first game. Yeah, it's going to be exciting times ahead. Uh, of course, we will be back next week. We'll be chatting all things women's football across the next uh, week or so. I think the one thing I will say about Galway, you know, I know you said you're quite disappointed. I don't disagree with you, but I have to say the social media team, whoever engineered the post on the Gemma McGuinness signing, it's my favourite post of this of the off season. Just I literally like, texted you. I was like, I literally yeah. texted you. I looked. I was like, Gemma McGuinness is going to go. It was just the way it was done. Yeah, I it think. was. It was whoever, phenomenal. Whoever, whoever they were, they've definitely set a marker for social media post of the year so far. And I think you know it was brilliant. And how I'd love to see more of that sort of stuff. Absolutely. Well, listen, that's it for this week. Uh, as we said, promised, just taking a look back at the off season, we'll talk about more about some of the ins and outs and the teams not involved in the President's Cup this weekend. But for myself, Brett Early, and from Aaron for this week, thanks so much to Roshi Manoy of Athlone who joined us earlier in the day to look back at uh, her season last year and the President's Cup. That's where all the attention is going to be on Saturday. We, of course, will have full live coverage of it here on finalwhistle.ie, but you will be able to watch it on LOITV.ie. Correct me if I'm wrong, it's on TV as well, Aaron? No, no it's just LOITV. LOITV.ie. Uh, do check it out. It's going to be a great spot to be this year for the women's. Uh, Premier Division, the brand new uh, League of Ireland division, and it's uh, exciting times for women's football. Uh, we're delighted to be part of it. And for myself and Aaron, we'll be chatting to you again throughout the season. Talk to you soon.